Okay, so I, I'd like to think of this as a master master class. We're with a master guru in Mindy Grossman, um, who uh, has had an amazing career so far. Uh, one of transformation everywhere she goes. She's considered a transformer, Ralph Lauren, Nike, HSN. Um, and we're going to talk about Weight Watchers. Um, perhaps not a company you'd think with a lot of transformation. 55 years old as a company. Um, its name kind of says what it does. It's for people who watch weight. Um, enter Mindy Grossman. Well, let me, let me step back a minute, Mindy. So you get a call, or do you? Why, why Weight Watchers? Actually, it's an interesting story. You know, I had spent almost 40 years in business doing what you said. I like to either reinvent, accelerate growth, transform. And I'm always looking for not what's in front, but where's the consumer going to go? And, and so it takes you right to Weight Watchers, of course. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the last two years I was at HSN Inc., you know, there was a president of HSN or a catalog division, so I was spending all of my time in where's the consumer going, how do we pivot, what do we invest in, how do we change technology, and the why behind that, yeah. which really took me down the path of if you're a brand today and you don't marry technology plus meaning to help people lead more connected and filled lives and have a purposeful relationship, you're not gonna be a brand going forward, which then took me into the connected world, connected health, connected home, and health and wellness. So it was October 2015 and I'm watching and I see that Oprah had come into the company um, and you know, bought, uh, owned 10% of the and company. And they got big news. On there's the board. A, there's another reason today Weight Watchers is making another big news announcement, which we're going to get to. I want to yeah. keep everyone in suspense, but that was huge news. Yeah, it was huge news. But what was interesting, the news to me, in addition to Oprah, was this idea that this brand that had transformed people's lives for 55 years was going from what was just a weight singular focus to a broader concept of wellness. But it was in the back of my head, I thought that was interesting. A year later, I saw they had made a change. And you know, we were looking for a CEO, I was gonna be chairman, but I knew I wanted to do one more big thing. But I didn't wanna be in retail, and I didn't wanna be in fashion, and what was everyone asking me to do, go run big retail companies or fashion companies. Uh, and I said, if I'm going to do anything else, not only do I want to deliver a financial return on equity, I want to deliver a human return on equity and really have it have purposeful impact. And you, it sounds like you've done some really deep thinking uh, in yourself to say, this is what I want. A Pretty tremendous clear. amount. Very, I've always said, I either passion, purpose, impact. Those are the three yeah. things I'm going to look at. Um, and it was, I think, November 2016-ish. Um, I got a phone call about yet another big retail job. And I said, I already said no. I said, but wait a second. At least they still call you. Yeah, you know. Don't you have the Weight Watcher search? And uh, they said, yeah, my colleague does. Why? I said, why hasn't anyone called me? And they go, well, we didn't think it was as big as what you were doing or expansive. So how big, how big, how big was Weight Watchers at that point? Uh, about a billion. And how big was the company you were running? Four and a half. You know, but I was asked to go run 30 billion. And I said, it's not size. It is impact and opportunity. And they said, are you interested? I said, how about I'm curious? And that's really how the whole thing started. But in the process of going through the diligence of saying, is this what I wanted to do? The, it's like anything else. If the more conversations you have and the more discovery you have, the more excited you are. And I realized that this was a 10x, 100x opportunity for this how? brand. Like, how did you know that it was a 10x opportunity? Well, if you look at what's happening in the world today, you know, everybody's talking about the 3.7 trillion wellness economy and what's happening, and everybody's calling themselves a wellness company and private equities into wellness, and everyone's excited about a $50 but face that would mask. Make most people go $20 smart. But that? the reality is there is no democratization right now of health and wellness. And the world is getting unhealthier every single day. And if we do not do something, for example, millennials will be the most obese generation in history. And today's two-year-old will have a better chance of being obese and being healthy. Wow. And, but it's not just weight. You can't solve it. And I'm the biggest 
purveyor that you have to give people tools, education, and habits. So, so you did your homework. And did all my this homework. And then weird. what I did, which I found was very interesting, um, and I heard people talking about transformation and everything today, and there's too many instances where you see a CEO come in and they want to affect transformation and they're gone in less than a year. Yes. Um, because there either wasn't with alignment with the board or um, you know, people didn't. So I wrote a four-page manifesto to the board of what I saw. I'd spent time with every board member, presented it to them, and said, this is what I believe this company can be in the world. And it's very significant, and we can touch that many people. And we can change the health trajectory in the world if we build our brand and we transform this business because of the relationships we've had with people, because we're not only about the science behind nutrition, but we're about building community and inspiring. And that's what got me excited. So and everybody said, this is exactly so they what liked we what wanted. They, they liked your manifesto. Absolutely. So let me ask you, at what stage in that do you start to talk to Oprah? Do you? Actually, she was one of the first people I spent time with. What's that like? Um, she's been unbelievable. I mean, you know, to have Oprah as a board member and a partner and a thought partner uh, has been fantastic. And the one thing I will say about her, which I'm a huge believer uh, in, there was a wall, uh, a, an article written uh, about her that says one of her unbelievable attrib attributes is she's able to practice ultimate discretion what she will and won't do. And I'm a huge believer in that. And when I work for Ralph and when I work for Phil Knight, it's more important what you say no to than what you say yes to. Um, and so she's been a great partner through this entire process. It's somewhat intimidating, I would think, to say, oh, I'm going to go in there and, oh, yeah, it's Oprah Winfrey and she has 10% of the company. You know, but she wants an executive who's not going to tell her what she wants. Really? She wants a CEO who's going to say, this is thoughtful, this is what we want to do, and this is purposeful. So I got to the company, yeah. I spent a month doing deep dives and quickly realized that in order for us to achieve that vision, we had to realign our purpose, we had to rechange our strategy, we had to determine our bold moves, um, and we had to un unleash that. And so we brought a team together from within the company all over the world, and I think it's really important uh, for companies when they're doing this, it's got to be built from within and it's got to be built with passion from the people there. And it's a company that is very purpose driven. Everyone at that company not only believes they have a role, they believe they're having an impact on people's lives. What was the tenure of the people you came in contact with? 55 year old company? Yeah, there were and many some people. Of them and, been and, there and to be years? fair, the company went through what I would call a near death experience at the end of 14, early 15. Um, very self-inflicted, insular, you know, not right. Um, and they had, went through a very difficult period. So I knew coming in that the most important thing was going to be to galvanize the culture and get people to believe in what the future is. And it's very hard if you have somebody who's just, you know, had a heart attack and they're in bed telling them they're going to run a marathon is very hard. Yeah, really hard. And here I am coming in, given what they just went through and they got the business back to stability and I'm talking 10x. And you have to really get people to understand but what you, that it means. It sounds like you had a lot of trust in those people and you gave them a lot of credit, which as an outsider, you could see a lot of people saying, oh, what do they know? So how you did know, you it's the know biggest to mistake to people make, and I had it happen to me when I joined HSNI, when it was part of Barry Dillard. Too many CEOs come in and they assume if the company wasn't doing well that the people there aren't good. And in most cases, it's that the leadership wasn't yeah. good. Now, you're going to have some superstars. You're going to have some people that are not going to necessarily be able to evolve to the level you need them to. And inevitably, you're going to need new people within the organization who have talents that may not exist. Um, but you know, I just see that as a fault when people come in and they make mass assumptions that aren't true. We had some fantastic people, and then we've built, you know, new people. So, so you we rallied built, them. We rallied them. And we a year later, the stock's up 65%. So whatever you did worked. What did you do? <laughs> so, yeah. so the first thing uh, we did is we built what we called our impact manifesto. Um, and what was our purpose going to be on the, uh, in the world? We presented that to the board in December, and then on February 7th, and I'm a big believer, and someone said it earlier, that your employees are the core foundation of 
your, not only your business, for example, there are members, there are people who want to get healthy themselves, the first people you need to galvanize. And we took over Alice Tully Hall and we had a thousand people there and we live streamed it on Facebook Workplace. Um, we were, were a case study for them because I wanted to be able to communicate around the globe. We had an hour and a half event and we rolled out our impact manifesto. Um, our strategies, our tenants, the fundamentals of how we, we were going to work. shared it with everybody in the organization. And we shared it. And a couple of weeks prior, we made, which some would think was an or unorthodox decision, that as much as this was a presentation for them, because we were given our brand, our reputation, our business goals by the end of 2020, we made the decision to make it public to the world. And we put it on our investor site, and we did a release, and we said, we are going to be the most transparent company you've ever seen because we believe in what we're doing and we're gonna measure ourselves by the milestones and by the execution that we have. And that took but, you to today. Yes, and, and but the pride in the people that we did that, and we said, here are the bold moves we're going to make over the course of X time. And then we gave our goals by the end of 2020. Um, we launched our, in January, we launched WW Freestyle, which was the newest program in the company's history to unbelievable success. Um, and so we started what I would call the beginnings of momentum. We had to do some myth busting of who the brand was and what the brand had to do. Um, we launched. The brand is in people's mind pretty narrow, and you were talking yeah, about why you know you have going to myth if you areas. go in. If you go in, you know it's like okay, you have to eat the food. We don't make food. We just make snacks and things like that. But you don't. You're not on a food program. You can eat anything you want. Uh, you have to go to meetings. We have 4.6 million people in a five-star, very sophisticated app. And then we do have meetings, because some, you know, 30,000 a week, but you don't have to. Um, and it's for your mom, right? So how did we make it relevant to make people understand that this could be important. for everyone? It's Relevance really is important, the key thing. Especially today. Yeah. And in order to transform, the first thing that has to happen is word of mouth. And, you know, so imagine going to the board early on and saying, okay, we're signing DJ Khaled as a uh, brand ambassador, um, and we're going to start before he's even gone on the program, because in today's world, people want the journey. Yeah. They want transparency, and we're going to do things different. Um, and then Kevin Smith, after he had his heart attack, wanted to be healthy, or Eric Greenspan, and all of a You're sudden, really making life it wasn't David. just So for... I want to I want to get some questions. Yeah. What happened today? So we've we've kept people in suspense. Yeah. What happened yeah. today? So the next evolution of this journey from you know being the undisputed leader in weight loss to wellness was really reimagining and relaunching the brand. And the look, the feel, what we do, how we do it. So today we announced that the brand name Weight Watchers is moving to the mark of WW, which we've been moving to for the last number of years with the tagline, Wellness That Works. We also are launching a whole new suite within our digital assets that are a 360 degree wellness tool from nutrition to proprietary barcode scanners to FitPoints 2.0, which is a whole new way of measuring activity. In some ways, this is a way to wrap what you've already it been is. doing, right? Because so it's if not you, like think of, you think of what wellness is, it's what you put in your body, how you move your body, and how your mind yeah. thinks. We announced a global partnership with Headspace for exclusive content. Um, we have community and we announce micro communities. So if you're a young mom, you can find and form a community. It sounds like you got to know um, But more important, well. we announced a healthy habits focus versus just weight loss. So you can come in and certainly if you feel that your way to get healthy is losing weight, we'll give you the tools. But if you really just want to understand how you can serve yourself in a better way, because if you ask people, do you want to be healthier? Everyone is going to say yes. But it's hard work. Now, if you ask them what the first thing they need to do, 75% of people are going to say they want to lose weight. But that's not enough. You really need to give people tools for it to be sustainable. And then we also announced our first uh, rewards program, which is different than any other rewards program that exists out there because it doesn't reward you for spending a dime. So a lot of, can I, I just want to stop and make sure we have some questions in the time we have left. Does anyone here have uh, some questions you want to ask of Mindy while, while maybe give you uh, a minute to think about it? Anyone have a question you want to ask? Adam. 
We'll ask the paddle microphone to come over. Hi, Mindy, Adam Lashinsky with Fortune Magazine. First of all, given uh, how important it is to say no, thank you for saying yes and being here with us <laughs> tonight. It's very, very meaningful. Would you, I'm, um, you talked about Headspace. Could you talk about who else you're working with? I'm thinking, for example, do you work, are you, is it important that you work with the Apple Watch? And there's 50 other things you could do. So what are you doing and what are you not doing? Yeah. How do you think about partnerships? In the so, the way, so the way we think about it, and just to let you know, close to 2 million uh, unique users sync with a digital device, either a Fitbit, Apple Watch, or we have close relationships and we've been enhancing those partnerships. Um, so th the lens we look at is, will it recruit, will it retain, Will it be in service of our members and will it elevate the brand? And we created what's called a purpose filter. All 18,000 people have a pad in front of them and in every conference room and everything goes through the purpose filter. And just to give you a quick idea, we put our food products through it and they didn't fit. So we made the decision to get out of 70% of all the individual food products we sell. And in January at retail, they've all been reformulated, remade, and they will all be in the new branding, which was important. So Same, courage comes to yeah. play there. You have to have courage, and you have to be brave, but you have to be thoughtful. And I think the other thing for us is the partners we want have the same vision of human impact that we do. It's not about shelf space, it's not about share, it's do we partner together? And someone asked me, what would ultimate success look like? And I said that X years from now, I'm standing up with a group of partners and we're able to announce that we together have changed the health trajectory of the world. And it's those Audacious sort of goal. things. But if you don't have the goal out there and have a path to get there, you're not going to get there in the first yeah. place. I think courage, vision. We had to one more question before we wrap up. I think there was a question here. Oh, well, right here we go. Thank you. Hi, Mindy. Uh, Matt Park from Dakadu. First of all, congratulations on having the courage to change the name of the company. I mean, that's got to be huge with such a recognizable brand name. I can't imagine what you must have gone through to make that decision. Um, I was wondering, there's been a lot of talk about artificial intelligence today, and there's going to be sessions about it tomorrow. I'm wondering, since you're developing apps in the wellness world, are you planning to use artificial intelligence in there anywhere? Are you doing that already? Yeah, so if you think about one of the key areas to give people sustainable success, it's how long they stay accountable and engaged. And so we're using it to be able to look at human behavior to understand when it is that people are gonna have recidivism. When is it that we have to motivate people? What are those prompts and details? So we have a whole team working on that to personalize all the communication to make it possible for us to keep people in the program longer, which means they will be healthier. And we're doing the same thing with our awards program. It's very important. And just on, on the name, we've been using that mark for over three years. So we have sub-brands, WW Cruise, WW Healthy Kitchen, WW Fresh. And you can imagine we did a tremendous amount of both qualitative and quantitative testing um, so we had to be surprising yet familiar to the members and the people that have been familiar with the brand for 55 years, but we really had to be a mark of excellence and wellness um, to those people moving forward and really be a partner in what people define as what healthy means to them. It's not us to dictate them to that. It's up to them. So time's up. Uh, if everyone hears you today and they're going to go back to their office on Wednesday, what are two or three words of wisdom you could give them to, to transform what they're doing? Well, I think it's be brave but thoughtful. Definitively build it from the culture. And really use your purpose filter in a way that allows you ultimate clarity of what you do. And then don't be afraid to envision 10x and beyond. Yeah, love that. Mindy Grossman, thank you all thank very you. much. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.